Hello everyone, this is the Structures Guy, and today we're discussing how do suspension bridges work. Suspension bridges were first introduced in the 8th century in China, but the modern suspension bridges were not presented until 1808 when the American engineer James Finley patented a system for suspending a rigid deck from a bridge's cables. The first main bridge that incorporated this technique was built by Thomas Telford over the Menani Straits in England and it was completed in 1825. The bridge is still in use although the iron chains were replaced with steel bars rings in 1939. In the mid 1800s another engineer called John Robing optimized the design of suspension bridges by introducing two major modifications. The first was stiffening the rigid deck platform using trusses and the second was adding supporting cables instead of chains to the bridge. The design of suspension bridges proved to be one of the most important accomplishments for humanity filled with successful bridges except for a very few ones like the famous Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Suspension bridges developed their name from the fact that the roadway is suspended by cables from two tall towers. This suspended roadway or deck between two towers is called one span. In reality, suspension bridges usually have multiple spans to account for longer distances when needed. Similar to a tied arch bridge which I discussed in a previous video, the road transfer is somewhat similar. When vehicles drive on the roadway of the bridge, the road or the weight of those cars and trucks transfer to the beams below. Those beams create two reactions at the two ends. Those beams are under bending moments and are resisting distributed loads. The reactions of the beam transfer to smaller cables called suspenders or hangers. Those run vertically from the deck or roadway up to the main supporting cables and are under tension. The suspenders will create down point loads on the main supporting cables which are under tension as well. Those cables are placed over the towers which convert those tension forces to compression forces acting on the towers. These main cables run horizontally between the two far flung anchorages. Bridge anchorages are usually solid rock or massive concrete blocks in which the bridge is grounded. The anchors pull outward on the towers with an equal force to that of the deck. The towers of a suspension bridge can be relatively thin because the forces at work are carefully balanced on each side of the towers. The compression loads acting on the towers are then transferred to the foundation below the towers, which in turn is dissipated by the earth below. All we have discussed so far is for resisting gravity loads, which are acting downwards. However, suspension bridges need to resist lateral loads as well, such as wind or seismic loads. Today, bridges have thicker and more rigid decks which make them less likely to sway. In addition to this, almost all suspension bridges feature a supporting truss system beneath the bridge deck called a deck truss. This helps to stiffen the deck and reduces the tendency of the roadway to sway and ripple. Also, bridges usually have an X bracing below the deck to resist lateral loads and to stiffen the roadway. The individual suspension cable which is used to support large bridge spans is created from thousands of small steel cables twisted into one large suspension cable. Those cables are inspected regularly for frayed cables, rust and corrosion. Special paint intended to fight the corrosion or rust is used to cover the cables. The current record holder for the longest central span of any suspension bridge in the world is Akashi Kaikyo Bridge in Japan with a span of 1900 meters or about 6234 feet and a total length of 4 kilometers or about 2.5 miles. The impressive aspect of the bridge is that it has been designed to withstand earthquake up to 8.5 on the rectal scale and can withstand wind speeds up to 
290 km per hour or about 180 miles per hour. This purge was completed in 1998 and is still the longest central span of any suspension bridge, which is impressive given that it was built 22 years ago. Suspension bridges have many advantages such as they can span over long distances, they are, are inexpensive to build, they are easy to maintain, they are incredibly versatile, and they are aesthetically pleasing. However, they have a few disadvantages such as they are vulnerable to wind if they are not designed properly, they can take a lot of time to build, and they can't be used in all applications or environment conditions. Each suspension bridge is designed uniquely with attention given to both function and aesthetics. New materials may be used or even developed to make the bridge less bulky and more efficient. Also, innovative designers sometimes create unusual solutions to their challenges making suspension bridge a marvel of engineering. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. See you next time!